Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and today I'm going to be checking out the Resident Evil 3 Remake. Unfortunately, Jim didn't get a chance to play this game, and I actually have a whole backlog of horror games I've played since COVID hit. So yeah, there'll be a lot of my individual reviews for this month. Sorry if you don't like those, but either way, let's go ahead and just jump into this game. Released in April of 2020, this game was developed and published by Capcom. Following the same general story as the original Resident Evil 3, the game follows Jill Valentine as she attempts to escape Raccoon City from the zombie apocalypse and her main antagonist, the Nemesis. Is it better than the original? Let's find out. Running off the same engine that the Resident Evil 2 remake used, this game looks absolutely amazing. As you would expect, all the characters and most of the enemies from the original game got a major overhaul. They kept some of the general shapes and styles of the enemies the same, but for the most part, everything has a fresh new coat of paint. Oddly enough, there were a fair amount of people that were upset with the change in the Jill uniform from the short skirt of the original game to what is now the skirt or the pants. I don't give two shits about that. That has nothing to do with the game. I care about how these monsters look. Like, when you blow apart a zombie like this, that looks amazing. And the Nemesis transformations, oh man, especially this second form, which is new to Resident Evil 3 altogether. When he's in this beast mode, it looks just crazy. And I definitely have to mention, one of the best improvements from the original Resident Evil 3 is how the Hunter Gammas look. In the original game, they looked more like frogs. That's the best way I'm going to describe them. Now, they are just hideous, crazy large creatures that can still swallow you with one bite, but it makes a little more sense this time. Raccoon City looks great. All the lighting is really dynamic and well done, and I don't have anything negative to say. I know there may be graphic snobs out there that might be able to point to X, Y, or Z, but you guys know me. I'm not like that, so I had to give this a 10. When it comes to beer, I'm only adding one, and this is really just for the great job in redesigning an already amazing series. The sound is one of the areas of the presentation where I may be the most lenient, because this game sounds amazing. From the guns, to the monsters, to the background noise, it sounds like you are in a city that's infected, which is exactly what you want it to feel like. Now, some people who are very heavy on music may complain that there aren't that many memorable tracks. And you'd be right. There's nothing that really stuck out as far as, wow, this is an amazing soundtrack, but the ambient noises that you're going to hear throughout the game, for me, make up for the difference. The voice acting is really well done, and they just got it down packed now. Gone are most of the cheesy one-liners from the original games, which, uh, admittedly, I kind of liked, but... I'm fine with this new style. Look, um, so I gave it an me. 8. And when it comes to beer, okay. I'm not even going to add any because there's not a whole not lot to say miles. about the sound for a game like this. Stupid. The control is damn near perfect. The control scheme is completely different from the original Resident Evil 3, as you would expect. I already mentioned that this game runs off the Resident Evil 2 engine, and similarly, it controls the same exact style. It's an over-the-shoulder third-person perspective. But this game added in that dodge mechanic from the original Resident Evil 3, and I gotta say, it's damn near perfected. I'm not someone who generally loves dodge mechanics in games. One, probably because I suck and I can't always pull them off. But this game, I had no issues. And it's really imperative that you learn how to pull this off if you ever want to play on some of the harder modes because you're going to have very little health, very little ammo. So you got to maximize your ability to evade these incoming attacks, especially when you're dealing with that asshole nemesis. Other than that, the menu, the reloading, the weapon swapping, it's all the same from the Resident Evil 2 remake. I have no real issues with the control, other than when you're running and you're trying to turn fast, it still gives you a little bit of sluggishness. It's nowhere near as bad as the tank controls of the old days, 
So I gave it a nine. It's really, really impressive and one of the best controlling Resident Evil games I've ever played. When it comes to beer, I'm gonna add one because I was proud as shit of myself that I learned that evade button as quick as I did. The gameplay is where this game gets interesting. So just like the original game, this is a fully action-oriented game with plenty of horror elements. I'm not talking Resident Evil 4. I'm talking you still have that that general sense of horror, but man oh man, you have a lot of weapons at your disposal. You have the evade mechanic that I already talked about. So everything is just much more fast paced. In the Resident Evil 2 remake, they made zombies scary again because they were so damn hard to take down. And don't get me wrong, they still are in this game, but they throw a lot more at you, and there's a lot more things in the environment like exploding barrels, or just generally more grenades that you can take out groups of them at a time. As I already mentioned, Nemesis is still your primary antagonist, and most of his encounters are scripted. Every once in a while he may show up, but still, just like the original game, if you go certain places, he won't be able to follow. He is a little more dynamic though, because he has the ability to climb ladders, to jump down, and he now has a flamethrower, so you got to be really smart when dealing with him. Since the story is basically the same, it was surprising to me how many things were removed from the original game. If you want to consider this a spoiler, go ahead, but some of the biggest things I noticed they got rid of is one, those live selection choices from the original game. Whether you love them or hate them, that was one of the staples of Resident Evil 3 because it made you feel like there were multiple branching paths and it might have been a reason to go back. Also, they got rid of mostly all the puzzles. There's still a few, especially in the early game, but yeah, gone are the clock tower and the park, graveyard. There's just a lot of things that are no longer in the game, which it felt fine. Like that. I always felt like puzzles in the past were put as a way to kind of slow down the action when you just went through a whole bunch of fighting and then you kind of recoup yourself, you think, and then you get back to action. This game still does a good job of pacing, but as I said, it is way more action oriented. The only thing that they removed that I wish they would have kept is the Gravedigger, which is that giant worm boss. Now, while they did remove a lot from the original game, they also added some things, and one of them was now the Nemesis can go around and infect zombies. I get the mechanic and it makes it a little tougher, but it right away made me start thinking of Resident Evil 4 and the Plagas and all that. I just want regular zombies. They're tough enough. I don't need them to have a goddamn scorpion head to really fuck with me, so I don't know how I feel about that. And don't even get me started about those damn drain demios, demos, whatever the hell they're called. In the original game, they were more an afterthought, just a creepy enemy thrown in. In this game, there's a whole section dedicated to them, and my god, it is one of the most intense moments. When they're skittering out from their little hives and you don't know where they're coming from, it is creepy as hell. Add on top of that, if they do attack you, you get a very graphic depiction of them injecting parasites into you. You need to heal really fast or you'll die over time. And finally, while you no longer have the mercenaries mode, this game had the add-on of the Resident Evil Resistance. It is a really interesting idea and I'm going to cover that a little bit more when we get to replayability. But it's just a mode that kind of satisfies the need for some kind of multiplayer in these modern Resident Evil games. So from a gameplay standpoint, I really love what they did here. They didn't focus it 100% on the action. They kept the, the most important parts of the original game that we love. And they dropped off some things to give us a little bit more of a cohesive story. So when it comes to gameplay, I'm giving it an 8. It's still just your basic run around defeat the enemies, try and survive, and get the hell out of Raccoon City that you would expect. So when it comes to beer, I'm going to add two because I really don't get the hate for this game. The originality I can keep short because I kind of just mentioned all of it. They did add some things, but it's nothing that we haven't seen in other previous Resident Evil games, and especially with the Resident Evil 2 remake. A lot of the enemy updates and some of the section updates were what we would have already expected. The Resident Evil Resistance mode, you could debate whether that's really new, 
but that's really the only area I can give this game major points, so I had to give it a two. When it comes to beer, I'm only going to give it one because sometimes I think we expect these games to break the mold too much, and I like to stick with the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The replayability for this game is a, is one of the tougher things I had when thinking about a score because you do have multiple difficulty settings which start it with assist, standard, hardcore, and then inferno, which you can only unlock the later one by beating the game with the previous difficulty. So right there, there's a, a minimum you got to go back and play. Add in the unlockables that you need to find, the fact that you have this store where you can buy stuff such as your unlimited guns, so if you want to keep going back through the game, it gives you some reasons to keep playing. I guess if you want to call it a knock, although I wouldn't, there is only one ending. That never really bothers me with a game like this. I don't want a million endings, and I know sometimes in games you, some people want to get the best ending if you beat the fastest or you make choices. I kind of like that this just wraps up the story in one way. Outside of that, all the replay, all the additional replayability is going to come from that Resident Evil Resistance mode, which, let me just try to break it down as easily as I can. One person plays as the quote-unquote mastermind, setting traps, monsters, and all kinds of things in the way of four survivors who are trying to make it through a level. It seems like a great concept, and as the mastermind, you can have a whole variety of enemies at your disposal, from simple things like turrets and zombies, all the way up to the nemesis or Mr. X. I had so much difficulty, number one, trying to play this game because I never was able to get into a game as a mastermind. Then when I played as the survivors, I was going against masterminds that were somehow leveled like way, way higher than me. So they had much more advanced things and just died instantly. So I didn't have that much fun with it. I love the idea and maybe I'll go back and try it again. Either way, if I'm being objective, I still had to give this a 7 for replayability between the multiple ways to go back through the game to unlock some of those advanced weapons and play through the harder modes. You have enough reasons just to play the base game. Add in the fact that there is a multiplayer mode and additional unlocks with that mode, it's undeniable. There's lots of reasons to play. When it comes to beer, I'm going to add two for my inability to get on and play that resistance mode. Hopefully, they fixed it by now. So overall, I really am struggling with the idea of why people hate this game so much. Some say it's a little shallow, and to be honest, it is. As I said, it's only five to six hours tops, and once you really know what you're doing, you could get through this game like a speedrunner in like two hours, three hours. For me, that's kind of perfect. If you really want to take your time, analyze the whole environment, find all the collectibles, then you're going to spend a little bit more time with this game. But if you just want something that's fun and it can get very challenging, then it's a good game. There's plenty of horror elements. The nemesis battles feel a little bit more intense than the original game. And overall, I do think I prefer this over the original. Now, I'm not saying that this is better than the Resident Evil 2 remake, because it definitely is not, because that's one of the best games ever made. But it's one that deserves your attention, especially if you like the new engine. And maybe it's a good introductory game if you're not a huge horror fan and you want that nice balance of action and horror. So I gave it an 8. When I round in all my scores together, it comes out to an 8.1. It's an above average game. The presentation is undeniable. The control was one of the best for a Resident Evil game. And like I said, I had a lot of fun with it. So... Let us know what you think below, guys. Did you play this? Did you have fun with it? And once again, if you're considering it, it has my recommendation. So, till next time, guys, cheers. When it comes to beer pairing, I'm going to go with the Elk Valley Brewing Company's Nemesis Imperial Stout. Coming in at 9%, this is a hefty son of a bitch. So, just like when you deal with the Nemesis, make sure you take your time. Don't drink it too fast, because otherwise you're probably going to get downed a lot in this game. But either way, remember to drink your beers and play your games responsibly. As always, guys, thanks for checking out this video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you give us a thumbs up, leave some comments, or better yet, why not subscribe? Till next time, guys. Cheers.